Historic properties really give us a sense of place. It makes us unique and different from other cities. Uh, with, and it's really wonderful that we have been able to preserve so many uh, buildings from our past. And the city and the people that live in the city of Phoenix have really supported preservation efforts. A lot of people think about the boom years after World War II and how the city exploded, but our city is very fortunate to still have several properties left from the 19th century. And so we really try to celebrate those properties and thank the people that have been good stewards of those properties so they're still around for people to enjoy today. So the Doherty Peterson House is a great example of a Queen Anne style house that is left from the 19th century. It was the first uh, house that was constructed in the Capitol edition. Uh, you know, there's the original town site and then there were additions to that town site uh, as time went on. And the Capitol edition is where you will find the Doherty Peterson House. The only thing that was here from the porch was that piece from the wall to that post. So I had that as a pattern. All of this furniture in here was somebody's junk that they had brought out to the swap meet. Most of it was junk. And all the wicker you see in here that's uh, this wicker done there and out there on those chairs and stuff, I did that. The same with the furniture I bought here and there. And I have to really give a lot of credit uh, to Jody Spencer, who uh, bought this house, oh, probably about three decades ago, and really put it back uh, to its original um, shape. It was 1899, so it was, it was the first house in this whole subdivision built here. <laughs> this here, I picked up in a thrift store, and the lady says, you know what that is, don't you? I says, I sure do. She says, that's where they hid their Bible. I says, what? It wasn't their Bible they were hiding, it was their phone, because back then the phone was not something that was popular, so you didn't want to see it. All the materials that uh, Jody has collected over the years and put into the house, you really do feel, not just when you're walking up to the house, but when you go inside, you really feel like you're going back in time. And he's really done a marvelous job over the years, really collecting everything and putting it all together and making sure this house is maintained in good shape. I was born in Glendale. I'm an Arizona boy. I love Arizona and history is just I don't know, I just, I love it. And to get it, 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 it's these two hands, I don't have nothing up here, but these two hands can do anything. It's a Queen Anne style, it's a asymmetrical in its design, it's designed with various uh, materials, it's pretty ornate, you have um, a front facing gable, you have a, a large front porch, you have this tower and uh, on the second level, it's actually open, which is uh, kind of unique, and it's really a treasure here from the 19th century. Everybody thinks I'm in it for the dollar. I'm not in it for the dollar. I would have sold it a long time ago, but uh, we're gonna get in it before we both die, which we're darn close to that. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get in here. So we're gonna live in it. This house is one of only about around 50 left from the 19th century, and so it's really special. And of all the uh, properties we have that are left from the 19th century, this one's in really excellent shape. It's privately owned, it's been well cared for and maintained, and uh, you know, I hope that continues into the future. It's just, uh, there's something about this house. They said that everybody would gather at this house. They had, uh, they call this a music room because they, I guess they had a, 
piano or something in there. And uh, everybody in the neighborhood came to this house. So here she is, she's back. So several of our properties from the 19th century are what we call the Queen Anne style. And each of them does, has a little bit of a different take on that style from being very simple to very ornate. And so when you think of one of the most probably well-known uh, Queen Anne Victorian style properties is the Rosin House in Heritage Square. Heritage Square uh, consists of the 1895 Rawson House that we're in now, and we run that as a historic house museum. But it's also the rest of the original block, and it contains restaurants and galleries and shops. The Rawson House was built in 1895 by Dr. Rawson and his wife, Flora. And they only lived here two years. Um, since 1980, uh, the Heritage Square Foundation has operated the house as a historic house museum and the property is owned by the city of Phoenix, so we're partners in maintaining and preserving this beautiful house. It was in the 1970s that uh, rehabilitation began on the property, and, and so it's really important to the city of Phoenix. It's a really important historic resource. The house is our biggest and most important artifact, but it's full of furniture of the period, and uh, some of the families who lived here when it was a historic house have donated objects to us. The Rosin House was part of the original town site and that whole area still had several buildings that were still there. And so saving that area, not just the Rosin House, but also the homes around it, that was just really great foresight on, on behalf of the city to purchase that area and, and preserve those buildings because it gives you a real sense of going back in time. We are just so fortunate to have this gem in Heritage Square, as well as other historic buildings in Heritage Square that the public can uh, visit and enjoy. And actually, uh, you can tour the Rosin House and see what it was like you know, to live in, in a house from that era, which is it's just a gem to have around today. Dr. John M. Evans' house is another example of a Queen Anne style house. It's an elaborate example and probably one of the features that most people notice uh, right off the bat is the uh, onion dome uh, on the house, which is quite elaborate. My name is Katherine Leonard, I'm the State Historic Preservation Officer. So this particular building is what's called a Queen Anne Victorian. It's one of the few remaining Queen Anne Victorians here in the city of Phoenix. It's affectionately known as the Evans House after the gentleman who was the original owner of the house. So we're very proud to be uh, the State Historic Preservation Office housed in one of the most historic buildings here on the Capitol Mall. So some of the features that you can see on this building are the turned posts on the front porch, which is remarkable craftsmanship both for its time period and then of course for today. The use of different materials for brick and wainscoting here, we've got the wood wainscoting. You'll see we have a really nice wood shingled roof on top. This particular Queen Anne has an unusual feature here in Phoenix and what we call it the onion dome. It is shaped like an onion if you get it from the right perspective. The, um, the hallmark of Queen Anne too again is this, this interplay of different uh, types of materials and textures and often you'll see different colors. The city of Phoenix has one of the most robust, well-developed preservation programs here in the state. Uh, we are very fortunate to have the city of Phoenix as partners. The Jones Montoya House was constructed in 1879 and it's the oldest known and documented house uh, in the city of Phoenix, so it's, it's very special. 
Jones Montoya House is a great example in the city's rich history, built in 1879 at 10th Street and Buckeye Road. I'm Kevin Waite, and I am a senior planner in the Historic Preservation Office with the City of Phoenix. Our office does historic property surveys, and one of the surveys that we did was back in 1991, where we researched all of the rural and estate homes throughout the city. And this is one of them that came up during that study, and the more we researched it, we realized this one's really old. It was actually two separate buildings, and eventually over time, a Breezeway was connected the two buildings together, and then during the Victorian era, the, the nice uh, roof uh, style that's on the building, as you can see, was added so over time. It was in the middle of a agriculture area, so it was back in those days uh, that the Jones Montoya you know, families uh, were working here. And so we're, we're excited that we're able to bring this back to life. Chicanos Pro La Casa, one of the largest Hispanic nonprofits that promotes strong, diverse communities, acquired the property in the early 2000s. David Adame is a president and CEO. Gins is going to have their original wood floors in it, as uh, much of the windows that were there, but uh, highlighted and, and matched to the historic preservation component of it. And so that's the important piece, right? So that people can see how things were done in the past and how what this area was like before, right? Before the suburban spa. Uh, the city of Phoenix is very excited about this project. We provided some grant funds to help uh, see, it, see, see it through to fruition and uh, we're very excited. Since Chicanos por la Casa has owned the property, they have done quite a bit of uh, rehabilitation work. Um, the porch was kind of a mess, to be honest. If you saw photos of it originally, structurally, it, it was not really safe to walk on. The posts were kind of dangerously leaning to one side, and so they did a lot of structural repairs to stabilize um, not just the porch, but the entire building. Behind here, just north of this thing, is the uh, Santa Rita Center, which was part of that church, but also was, historic reasons, was the place where Cesar Chavez did his big fast here in Arizona. You know, it, it, you have to make sure the people behind you understand what this area was. How often can you see a house from 1879 here in Phoenix? <laughs> you know, so this house has, again, quite a bit of history, not just for the adobe construction and the architecture, but also for the association with Dr. Jones and his story, uh, Alcaria Montoya and her story as a young Mexican-American who married Dr. Jones. There, there's a rich history here, and you can read about it in books and you can look at pictures, but it's not the same as being able to come and see the building, walk inside the building, see the construction, being able to actually touch it, feel it, and experience it firsthand. That's a whole different level of appreciation. So the Smirthway House was constructed in 1897, uh, but it was moved to Pioneer Cemetery in 1994. The family who had the house in the will uh, gave it to the Museum of Northern Arizona, the Heard Museum, and the uh, Phoenix Art Museum. Uh, but they wanted it to be moved to Pioneer Cemetery and used for a public purpose. And so today, it serves as the visitor center for the, for the cemetery. This is the style that the people who moved here brought with them. They wanted to recreate Indiana in the middle of the desert. They wanted to recreate Minnesota in the middle of the desert. <laughs> This room was the parlor. It would have been used primarily for your guests. Uh, this was a prim and proper era. Your guests would be down here. Uh, this is where you would put your finery. The furnishings of this house are of the period. We have been very, very fortunate uh, by some of our members donating this lovely settee and the matching barrel chair. House was built in 1897, which is the very end of the Victorian era. Uh, this house, this size, this era would have been one of the more elite homes. And in 1897, we were not a state yet. People were moving here from back east, from the Midwest, and start over anew. That's how we got this house, the Rawson House, several other homes. 
The Smurthwaite house is significant for its style. The first level of the home is brick, and the second level is wood framed. But its roof is arguably its most unique feature. The shingle style is not common here, and actually uh, it was developed uh, along the East Coast um, back in the 1880 period. And so as architects and people moved here, they brought those ideas with them. The, the family that lived here, the patriarch was Captain Trustrum Connell. Okay. And this is the gentleman here. He was a union corporal. Mm -hmm. He was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. He captured a flag during the Battle of Sailor's Creek. He was also uh, the uh, Wells Fargo agent for Phoenix. This era, because it was just at the very end of the Victorian era into the Edwardian, the lace curtains, the lace tablecloths, we're still into some of the darker paint colors, but if you notice the color in the parlor is much lighter. This is a built-in uh, china cabinet, the dishes that are in there of the era. Because this was the Victorian era, you could not have a Victorian home without a fern. A fern. Yes. <laughs> uh, the paintings and prints are of the era. Victorians were into botanicals and flowers. Mm -hmm. So if you'll notice, almost all of the, the pictures in this house have something to do with uh, botanicals. So um, would that have been a formal dining area? This house was originally going to be a boarding house. Okay. So it would not be very, very formal. Dr. Perman is the gentleman who uh, commissioned uh, Creighton to come and build the house, and they were going to uh, have it built as a income property. And that's why some of the second floor doors and windows and things are a little bit above what was the normal. A lot of times in a Victorian home, downstairs looks great, but the second floor is just bare bones, and they spared no expense upstairs. He had it for a couple of years, and then they sold the property. The work of Canadian architect James Creighton was very popular in the territorial days of Arizona. But the Wild West has long since been domesticated, the city of Phoenix continues to grow, and the house's original location at 7th and Fillmore has since moved 26 blocks to 13th and Jefferson. The location moved, and that isn't always a good thing for a historic building because the setting changes, but the setting on 7th Street had changed so much with the road widening and with commercial encroachment coming there that it was actually moving it over to Jefferson Street by the cemetery actually helped restore some of that setting in terms of the large setback and the landscaping. Phoenix doesn't have many territorial houses left, so it's important to preserve them. As with any museum, a house museum or nonprofits, it really is a challenge these days when you rely on volunteers and organizations and you don't have city staff to support those efforts, uh, then they're not always able to remain open as much as the public uh, may like. It really is part of the job of the Historic Preservation Office to work with the community and make sure they're aware of these historic resources. And I think once people have a good understanding of their significance and importance, then they will help support initiatives that help uh, fund some of those projects. We have a historic preservation uh, bond fund and we have four programs for people to apply for grants to rehabilitate their historic properties. And the people that uh, live in the city of Phoenix have supported 
uh, bond elections where those funds uh, were approved. And so we're hoping again that we'll have another bond election so we can uh, help with the rehabilitation of these properties so they'll be around a lot longer into the future for uh, visitors and residents of Phoenix to enjoy.